you. Thank you all so much. Snow wasn't going to damper the spirits of Democrats. And it, it really is impossible to express how grateful I feel for everything that the people of this state have done for me, for my family, for our country over the years. To paraphrase your native son, Daniel Webster, New Hampshire is a small state, but there are those who love it, and I am one of them. You know, going all the way back to 1992, you opened your homes and your hearts to us. In 2008, you lifted me up and gave me back my voice. You have taught me again and again that the only direction that matters in life is forward. And over the past few days, some people have looked at the polls that show Senator Sanders with a big lead here and suggested, yeah. That's a fact. And suggested I should just look past New Hampshire and focus on the next states. Well, New Hampshire's never quit on me, and I'm not going to quit on you. campaign we've built here. Thank you, thousands of volunteers. I know how hard you're working across the state, pouring your dreams and determination into this effort, calling your neighbors, knocking on doors in the winter cold, going to HillaryClinton.com, contributing whatever you can because you want a president who will roll up her sleeves and make a difference in your lives. And this enormous support that you have demonstrated ranges across the state, many different people, many different walks of life, I want to start by thanking your extraordinary United States Senator, Jean Shaheen. And I like saying this because it's just a small way of recognizing her historic achievements. But she is, as of now, the only woman in American history to have served both as a governor and a senator. And I hope, I hope next November, you will send the second woman to have served as a governor and senator, Maggie Hassan, to the Senate. The support the advice of these two remarkable leaders means the world to me. I've worked with them. I've supported them. I've watched what they have achieved in their public careers. 
And I'm just so grateful to New Hampshire for lifting them up and for giving them the chance to lead and to serve. I also want to thank you for electing, and I know you will send back Congresswoman Annie Custer to represent you. And I certainly hope you return Carol Shea Porter to the United States Congress. But in addition to these well-known people who support me, who have been truly at my back and my side, there are so many others, like Ava, an overachieving high school senior up in Berlin, who also works most nights at her family's restaurant. She still makes time to volunteer for my campaign. Why? Because she has seen how much the Affordable Care Act has meant to her family and their small business, and she doesn't want to see that progress ever ripped away. Or another young woman, Samantha, who works three jobs in Belmont, including a lot of night shifts. But she still finds time to volunteer for me because she's absolutely determined, she said, to elect a progressive who gets things done. And if it means, if it means also breaking the highest, hardest glass ceiling, well, that sounds pretty good, too. every elected official, every local leader, all the members of organized labor, Planned Parenthood, NARAL, the Human Rights Campaign, the League of Conservation Voters, and every other progressive organization who are working so hard for my campaign. Now, one thing I know for sure is how seriously the people of New Hampshire take your responsibility as the first in the nation primary. And I know that a lot of voters are still shopping. You may have a favorite, but this is New Hampshire. Everyone takes a second look, maybe even a third or a fourth look. And I hope you'll give one of those looks to me in the next couple of days. going to compete for every vote here. I'll answer every question. I'll work my heart out to earn your support. Because in this campaign, I've listened to people across New Hampshire, indeed across the country, share the problems that keep them up at night and that seem always to stack the deck even more for those at the top. Prescription drug companies are jacking up the price of drugs for no reason other than greed. I've met people whose bills have doubled, even tripled, overnight. Powerful corporations are moving their headquarters overseas for no reason other than to avoid paying U.S. taxes, including an auto parts company that lobbied for the rescue of the auto industry back in 2008. All of us, all of us taxpayers, we helped to save them. Now they want to turn their back on America. They call it an inversion. I call it a perversion, and we've got to stop it. Think of this. Think of this. A governor and state government in Michigan allowed children in Flint to drink poison water just to save a buck, as if their lives weren't worth even that much. As I said some weeks ago, ask yourself, would it have happened if they were rich and white instead of poor and black? We know the answer, don't we? 
Senator Sanders and I agree. We've got to stop bad things from happening. But I believe we've got to start good things happening again in America. We need, we need a bold national mission to get jobs growing and incomes rising so working families can get ahead and stay ahead. We need to pull our country together so there's more justice and dignity and opportunity for all of our citizens. And we need to measure our success by how many children climb out of poverty and how many families work their way into the middle class, not how many CEOs get bonuses at the end of the year. I'm running for president because I believe that America can't reach its full potential when you're held back from reaching yours. I want to break down all the barriers holding Americans back from achieving their dreams. Economic barriers, of course, especially those put in place by greed, producing inequality. But the problems in America cannot be reduced to Wall Street and Washington, as important as those are. We also need to break down the barriers of racism and sexism and discrimination against the LBGT community, immigrants, and people with disabilities. to take on those quiet, devastating challenges of addiction and mental illness. We need to help families struggling to care for loved ones with Alzheimer's and autism. I want to remove the obstacles standing in the way of people and communities that have been left out and left behind from coal country to our inner cities. Because when every child has the chance to succeed, America succeeds too. You saw in that video, you saw in the video where Bill said something that really stuck with me. He has a way of doing that, you know. <laughs> he was talking to a group of young people, and he told them, you still have more tomorrows in your life than yesterdays. And those of us who have more yesterdays than tomorrows, believe it or not, spend most of our time thinking about the future. I certainly know that's true for all of us who are grandparents, uh, because that really focuses your, your mind on the future. And if I have the honor of serving as your president, I will spend all my tomorrows doing everything I can to make your tomorrows better to give every one of our children the possibility and prosperity they deserve. So, please, imagine, imagine with me, imagine a tomorrow where your hard work is finally honored and rewarded with rising incomes where the minimum wage is no longer a poverty wage. We know yesterday Republicans in Concord said no to raising the minimum wage. Well, I will say yes, and I know how to get it done. Imagine a tomorrow where we produce enough renewable energy to power every home in America and create millions of good jobs doing it. I know how to get that done. A tomorrow where education lifts you up and student debt doesn't drag you down. Where young people have the opportunities and choices you deserve and where more entrepreneurs can start and grow new small businesses. Imagine. Imagine a tomorrow 
where parents have paid family leave so they don't have to choose between a paycheck and caring for a new baby or a sick relative. A tomorrow where we overturn Citizens United and finally get big, unaccountable money out of our democracy. And imagine a tomorrow where gun violence no longer stalks our country and the gun lobby can't stand in the way of every common sense reform. That's the tomorrow I want for us, for our kids, for our country. And I know how to get that done. We Democrats face a big choice on Tuesday. And I want to take a minute right now to speak to all the young people who are here whether they are supporting me or whether they are supporting Senator Sanders. Now, of course, I still hope to persuade those who are supporting Senator Sanders to give me another look, but I want you to know that I am truly glad that you are involved in this process and in the Democratic Party. You are bringing energy, ideas and urgency to our shared causes. And I can't help but think about how I felt when I first came to New Hampshire in 1968 to campaign for my presidential candidate, Jean McCarthy, to end the war in Vietnam. And in the following years, I went all over our country, trying in my own way to make things better. I went undercover in Alabama to expose racism in the schools. I drove throughout South Texas, registering Latino voters. And I even shocked my friends by moving to Arkansas with my then boyfriend, because we were in love and so fired up to do good work there. And I learned, I learned what you all are proving every day. You can make change without being elected to anything. You just need to go do it. So I respect, I respect not only your enthusiasm, but also your seriousness about helping to make our country what it can and should be. And that's why I want to take just a few minutes to make my case for why I believe at this time I am the better choice to be your president. Now, Senator Sanders and I, Senator Sanders and I share big progressive goals for our country, but I believe I've laid out stronger plans for how to achieve them and how to make a real difference in people's lives soon. And You know, I've heard some of the pundits say the differences between our approaches comes down to head versus heart. Well, I don't see it that way. For me, it's both. We've had a worthy debate about health care in our campaign. We have had substantive disagreements over issues, as it should be. Compare that to the campaign of insults going on on the Republican side. So when we draw these contrasts, we do it within the context of both of us understanding we have to go to the American people. We have to explain what we want to do and how we will accomplish it. I have fought my entire career to get quality, affordable health care for every single American. And I know, I know how hard that is. The insurance lobby and the drug companies spent tens of millions of dollars to stop us. And it was disappointing because I had traveled to so many places to meet with so many Americans who were so hopeful 
that finally they would have health care for their families. I have a million stories that tugged at my heart and fill my brain. One in particular that summed up for me what was so profoundly wrong. It's from a visit I made to the Children's Hospital in Cleveland. And I was sitting in a conference room talking with parents of very ill children. And they were telling me how difficult it was to get the medical care their children needed. One man said, look, I'm successful. I provide health care for my employees and the business that I started. But nobody, nobody will sell me a policy to ensure my two daughters, they both have cystic fibrosis. He said, I don't understand. I've gone from place to place. And I asked him, I said, what do they tell you when you say you've got the means, you can buy something? He said, well, the last person I spoke with listened to me and then just looked at me and said, you don't understand. We don't insure burning houses. This man got tears in his eyes. He said, they called my little girls burning houses. We didn't get everything we wanted, but I got back up, went to work with Republicans and Democrats, and we got the Children's Health Insurance Program that insures eight million children in America today. That program, that program became a lifeline for those eight million kids and a sense of some peace and security for their families. Now, let me be clear. I never gave up on the dream of universal health care, not for a second. And eight million kids was certainly not everything we wanted, but it was real. And I couldn't bear the thought that we would leave children without health care even a single day longer than we had to. I think based on the work I've done over so many years that when you see people hurting, you see them being treated unjustly, unfairly, discriminated against, and you want to help them to do something that demonstrates that you care, that maybe you can make their lives a little better, try to do it. And if that means a quieter kind of success, that's fine. That's why I say with all my heart, let's build on the Affordable Care Act right now. Let's get those out-of-pocket costs down. Let's tackle the price of prescription drugs. Let's not start a new divisive debate about the shape of our whole system that will just lead to gridlock and won't help anyone get the health care they deserve. The people I've met in this campaign can't wait. They shouldn't have to wait. The young waitress who spends all day working at a restaurant and all night working in a factory needs a raise. She can't wait. The widow I met who lost her home because her Social Security payments just didn't go far enough deserves better. She can't wait either. The young people I meet who want to start small businesses, the entrepreneurs who have dreams. They need our help and support. People to believe in them, they can't wait. Women across our country deserve equal pay for the work we do. They can't wait. I don't think any of us can wait. You deserve a president who will listen to you, fight for you, and get results for you. And I won't make promises I can't keep. This is, this is the biggest 
job interview in the world, my friends, and you should hold us accountable. I'm a progressive who likes to get things done, and I have learned I have learned you have to be both a dreamer and a doer. You have to push forward every single day for as long as it takes. And I also know a big part of the job I am seeking is keeping our families safe, our country strong, and our troops out of war. So, you are not just picking a president. You are choosing a commander-in-chief. And I know that sometimes foreign policy might seem a little remote. That's understandable with events taking place on the other side of the world. But things that happen overseas can directly impact your life, your job, and your family. Now, there's terrorism, obviously, but that's not all. Just in the past few weeks, we've seen problems in China sending stock markets here plummeting. That can affect your retirement savings. As we sit here tonight, North Korea is working on missiles that could reach the United States. We need a president who understands how to deal with that threat. As we sit here tonight, our troops are still in harm's way in Afghanistan. We need a president who can give them the support and the strategy they need. Russia, Iran, ISIS, these are not issues that we can put off to the side. They cannot be an afterthought. They have to be just as present on the desk in the Oval Office as all the other work we need to get done here at home. I am very proud of the experience and judgment that I would bring to this job. I've done the hard work of diplomacy. I've spent countless hours in the Situation Room advising President Obama on the hardest choices, the toughest calls a president ever has to make. A president, any president, has to be able to do all parts of the job. The American people need confidence that you can keep them safe, get the economy moving again, and build on the progressive accomplishments we've made under President Obama. And with your help, that is exactly what I will do. And let's not forget, the real goal here is to defeat the Republicans, whoever they nominate. And let's face it, they all disagree with pretty much everything all of us believe in. They won't do anything to help women get equal pay or hold Wall Street accountable. Yeah, they will do a lot to turn back the clock on your rights. And I want you to know where I stand. I will protect our rights, civil rights and voting rights, workers' rights and women's rights, gay rights and the rights of people with disabilities. gender card well of standing up for women's rights and women's health and equal pay is playing the gender card then deal me in I will defend marriage equality and work to end discrimination against the LGBT community from privatizing Social Security, Medicare, or the VA. And I will stand up to the gun lobby, the most powerful lobby in Washington. But, but here's the truth. No candidate for president has all the answers. And no president can do this work alone. 
I know what it's like to be knocked down. I doubt there's anybody who hasn't had hard times in their life here tonight. But I learned from my family and my faith that it is not whether you get knocked down, it's whether you get back up. And I believe not only do we individually have to get back up time and time again, because as long as there's work to do and people to help, we can't stop. But I think our country has to get back up. I think we have to once again have the kind of confidence and optimism that is part of the American DNA, where we set big goals, where we summon the best of our natures, where we work together again across all the lines that divide us. Every day of my life, I try to practice what's been called the discipline of gratitude. Now, that means not just be grateful for the good things, because that's kind of easy, but being grateful for the hard things, too. Grateful even for our limitations, because in the end, they can make us stronger. They can give us a chance to reach beyond our grasp. They can also teach us that we're better together when we work to find common ground. America's facing a lot of challenges, but I believe with all my heart we can rise to meet them. You see, I believe in the potential of every American to solve the toughest problems, to be resilient no matter what the world throws at us. I am deeply grateful for this country and for all of you. If we can break through the barriers that hold people back, if we can unleash the talent and potential of our people, there are no limits to what America can achieve. So again, imagine with me an America where your wages actually match your hard work, where every hard hit community is thriving again with new investments and new jobs, where quality, affordable health care and child care are available to every family. We can build that country. We can make our tomorrows greater than all our yesterdays. I'm fighting for the millions of people who can't wait. I'm fighting for our families and our future. I'm fighting for the America I know we can build together and for each and every one of you. Thank you all so very much. Thank you. God bless you.